You know, the touched. Yes, they have weird deformities and afflictions. They're unhappy. Well, whatever they are, I think they're a gold mine. So as the touch, you guys are very much the others. You're not accepted. You're victims of who knows what. And it's changed your lives in like all sorts of different immeasurable ways. I mean, I guess I suppose it's different for each one of you, but is being touched a gift or a curse? Yeah, my character, Lucy Best, who I play, is definitely conflicted by the the gift that that she's been given. Um, and whilst she is making this new group of friends and 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 she's realizing in spite of herself that she, you know, uh, you know, she's connected to them. Um, but definitely my, my character is, is somebody who's somewhat tortured by this incredible power that she that she has. Um, and, um, and, and, and fearful because it's such an incredible strength is that she might do harm with it to the wrong people, to maybe to this new family that she's become a part of. Well, on the flip side, Eleanor, Mary's power is like a pure goodness power, but just for the touch. <laughs> you know, the other people don't even know what it is. Non-touch mm-hmm. people. Um, do you think that she was given that ability for a particular reason or was that just like the luck of the draw? Oh, I don't know if there's a, well, maybe there is a reason that everyone's been given a certain power, but um, I think Mary even struggles with that a little bit. You know, why her? Why is she the leader? She's naturally quite shy and you know is, is there something is there something in that you know she she hangs back at first and in, in coming forward and and eventually she does find her voice in both senses of the word you know and she finds her place within this society of, of the touched and and how realizes how she can help them and how she does want to be a part of this Desiree is a rather like famous okay. lady of the night who who also just happens to elicit people's deepest, darkest secrets at their moment of, um, I don't know, uh, exhilaration. Let's put it that way. Do you think she had fame before her abilities or did the did the fame come post-ability? I mean, it's hard to imagine they weren't, they didn't help come hand in hand, so to speak. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could be misconstrued, but I'm sure you won't. But um, yeah, she she's someone who actually is finding her own turn quite exhausting and you know there's only so many secrets from every single person you meet that you can take on because that energy is quite frantic and um really she's Desiree's looking for a safe space for her and her dear son Nigel who doesn't speak god bless him and uh and so it's been helpful to her it's also been trying to her and I think she comes from um an exhaustive career on the game and she's ready to retire at the ripe old age of 30, whatever she is. So, yeah, that's been that's been nice to come in from a point of view of someone who's really lived a full life and is looking for a retirement village, really. And instead, she finds the orphan <laughs> orphanage. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because we at the same time are sort of starting to see Hugo's plan where he's sort of using members of the touch as sex workers who like offer something a little extra. And there's an air of like... um exploits like he's giving them safety in that he's like hiding them in these caves but he's also exploiting them because like you know it's sort of a who's taking advantage of who here and in some sense Desiree has gotten the better end of it because she has agency and she's like using her you know she's getting out and using her own you know she can move it in her own circles as she like yeah I mean Desiree is the sort of person to enter the club and try to unionize the workers at least so that shows what kind of woman she is. She doesn't necessarily, you know, think it's a bad thing, but I think she wants to empower women because she's had her own sense of empowerment in her own career. Eleanor, in in an, in another time or another sense, I guess you could call the touched. You could call the touched superheroes. Like they've been given these magical powers by some mysterious force or incident. Would you call them superheroes? And like, I guess it depends how heroic you think the individual people are. Yeah, I think it does definitely depend on that. But um, I think I would call them superheroes, definitely. Superheroes of the time. Period women superheroes. Yeah. Elizabeth, what do you think of that? Yeah, I I agree with that. And also we don't yet know um, as actors, but also members of the audience, um, they're, they're part of a 
a much bigger, bigger story here um, and how they connect in, in that jigsaw puzzle that's just so extraordinary and kind of uh, they're, they're part of a bigger, a bigger story being mapped out, aren't they? Well, we'll have to wait and see. And I, I know I've <laughs> seen the four for episodes, it. and I'm like, I can't. I need uh, to know uh, what happens. Attached, a part of something much bigger. Oh.